Welcome back to Family Health Today. I'm Dr. Jeanette Neshwat. As we discussed earlier in the show, the epidemic of sexually transmitted diseases in the United States is on the rise, and the key to fighting it is education and prevention. Joining us now is Dr. Ron Brimberry from the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. Welcome, Dr. Brimberry. Well, thanks for having me on the show. All right, I appreciate we're, it. We're glad you're here today. First, tell us, what is a sexually transmitted disease? Well, uh, it's an infection. Uh, that is transmitted through uh, sexual contact uh, and it can be from a variety of agents uh, but mostly uh, we're dealing with viruses and uh, bacterial germs. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the most common age group that STDs or STIs are found? Well it's interesting I was doing some reading about that and uh, although the age range of 15 to 24 mm -hmm. years of age represents um, only about a quarter mm -hmm. of the population, it's, uh, that age group has about 50% of all the STD burden uh, in the United States. Sure, and why do you think that that is uh, so? Well, I suspect it's because young people are more uh, sexually active, mm -hmm. uh, having more sexual partners and more sexual experimentation than people who are older and settled and married. What are the most common STDs that you're seeing? Well, if you look at the, the statistics, uh, it would, uh, be uh, of the bacterial germs, chlamydia mm -hmm. is a very prominent uh, infectious agent, uh, followed by uh, gonorrhea. Uh, then when you get to the viruses, uh, probably the most common sexually transmitted disease that we see is the uh, human papillomavirus, uh, which can lead to cervical cancer in uh, young women. And then uh, herpes simplex virus, which can cause um, uh, mm -hmm. disease in the, both men and women. And I've read recently that there's a rise in STDs among the older population as well. Do you agree with that? Well, I think it, it's uh, probably true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen t all the statistics in that regard. but uh, sure. And now as far as prevention, that is the key here. How do we prevent STDs in all age groups, Dr. Brimberry? Well, the key to prevention is education, mm -hmm. as you s said earlier. And uh, I think that um, always uh, education starts in the home with the parents uh, teaching their youngsters uh, uh, about their sexuality and about how to prevent disease. Uh, states vary in terms of how they present sex education in schools and mm -hmm. in our state of Arkansas uh, sex education is not a required part of the curriculum in our public schools so uh, I think in age-appropriate settings in the school, that would probably be a good place to start. Absolutely. Now, what would you say are the best ways to diagnose STDs? Do you recommend routine screening for certain individuals every year, or if someone becomes symptomatic? For women under the age of 25, the CDC recommends that they begin screening annually for chlamydia, which would involve a pelvic exam and a swab of the mm -hmm. cervix so that they can either do direct cultures of the bacteria, or more commonly nowadays, we do uh, DNA testing mm -hmm. for the antigens associated with these bacteria. You can also, in some cases, get these tests done just with a simple urine specimen uh, at the time that a uh, young woman may be going in for their uh, pelvic mm -hmm. examination and mm -hmm. pap smear. What if a female comes back with an abnormal pap smear? What are some of the first steps that you do? Well, the most common cause of abnormal pap smears in our society is associated with the human papillomavirus. Mm -hmm. And uh, it depends on, on what level of abnormality you have. Mm -hmm. But uh, in our clinical practice, if we have women who have the very lowest level of abnormality called atypical squamous cells, we automatically ask the uh, laboratory to run the HPV testing, which tells us whether the type of uh, HPV infection is being caused by some of the types of the virus that are uh, more likely mm -hmm. to cause cancer or not. And if it was a higher level of an abnormality, what is the next step at that point? Is well, that if they have a higher level of abnormality, we assume that they've already gotten one of the high-risk HPV type infections mm -hmm. that can progress towards cervical cancer. And the guidelines nowadays actually depend on the age of the woman. Uh, if you're an adolescent younger than the age of 20, the guidelines are uh, less stringent. We watch them for a while longer because I think that the immune systems in younger people are more robust and may be able to handle some of these infections. But we do more frequent 
surveillance through pap smears to make sure it's not mm -hmm. progressing. If, if it is uh, a high-grade abnormality or progresses to one, then we do a test called a colposcopy, which essentially mm -hmm. just uses a uh, instrument that's like a binoculars mm -hmm. with magnifying glasses and a bright light, and the physicians can put stains on the woman's cervix and see if there's any uh, abnormalities that show sure. up, which we then biopsy and confirm. So a colposcopy can not only be a diagnostic test, but can also sometimes be a treatment test, would you agree? N not the colposcopy itself, but in some cases we do what's called a, a, a colposcopy mm -hmm. with a leap, sure. and that okay. we can do in one setting if we know we're dealing with a high-grade mm -hmm. abnormality in the first place. So if a woman comes in with a high-grade lesion, you can do the colpo colposcopy exam and the LEAP, which is a loop electrical excision of the abnormal tissue all sure. at the same setting. And, and to help prevent obtaining that abnormal HPV or those high, high strains, those dangerous strains, um, abstinence or using condoms and monogamy, I guess, would be some of the, uh, the ways to protect yourself. Would you agree? Well, sure, that's the way to protect yourself from right. pregnancy or any STD. But the wonderful thing right now about uh, HPV is that uh, there is now a vaccine mm -hmm. which has been developed uh, in our country and in use around the world. But this vaccine is now not only uh, recommended for use in young mm -hmm. women, but it's also recommended for use in young men as well to try to curb this epidemic of infection that we see with human papillomavirus. Absolutely. What are the age groups to be given those vaccines? If I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and this is from memory, I think sure. it starts at about age 14 through okay. age 26. And is it a series of vaccinations? It is. It's a three-shot okay. series. All right. And you've mentioned um, the vaccine, colposcopy with LEAP. What are some of the other treatments for STDs, Dr. Brimberry? Well, it depends, of course. Uh, if you're dealing with a chlamydia or gonorrhea, mm -hmm. we do have very effective therapies with our antibiotic treatment. The problem with those infections is that many times young women in particular may have these infections mm -hmm. progress without having too many symptoms and can lead to more uh, problems for them sure. such as uh, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, infertility, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, even in the case of preg young pregnant women giving birth, it can cause infections in the mm -hmm. newborn. So they don't sometimes know that they even have it, which is the important reason why physicians who provide care should screen for these sexually transmitted Absolutely. diseases. How would you say teen pregnancy plays a role with STDs? Hmm. Um, well, I, if you're a teen who's pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, you may be more apt to be exposed to STDs or, or to have STDs. Uh, some, one of the ways that uh, STDs can be prevented is through the use of condoms. Mm -hmm. And so if condoms are being used, then hopefully pregnancy wouldn't have occurred in the first place. So the, I guess there's an association between getting pregnant and being expo exposed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I answered sure, your question. Sure, well, absolutely. But, yeah. Do you rec also recommend for those who are sexually active who are using condoms to also use anti-sperm um, foams that and that sort of thing? certainly give you better protection from an unwanted pregnancy. And, and then I, I also know that there's a new uh, anti-HIV, so, so to speak, a sort of gel that's available that's being tested. I shouldn't say it's available. That's be currently being tested. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Have well, I think it would be great yeah. uh, because that's one of the most insidious mm -hmm. infections that we deal with. You don't have any uh, obvious clues that your partner may be infected. Sure. I read another statistic on HIV, mm -hmm. which we haven't talked mm -hmm. about yet, that showed that about, I think it was in 2006, that there were 56,000 cases of HIV diagnosed during that year. And it's estimated there are about a million Americans who are infected with the HIV wow. virus, of whom 20% don't even know that they yeah. have it. So Alarming if you don't numbers. even know you have it, yeah. then it's obvious it can be spread to other partners. And the only way to prevent it would be safe sure. sex practices. And uh, help diagnosing it earlier to get treated earlier and right. have, hopefully have a longer lifespan. Right. Do you think, Dr. Brimberry, in, in young children, teenagers, I should say, do you think it's just lack of education or irresponsibility that they're acquiring these STDs and becoming pregnant? I think some of both mm -hmm. of those things could be true. Uh, it's natural for teenagers to want to explore their mm -hmm. sexuality sure. and uh, but youth and inexperience sometimes go together hand in hand and can lead to making poor choices, poor judgments sure. in life. Okay. Now, I understand that minors do not need consent from their parents for STD 
testing or um, forms of birth control? Well, I think that varies from state mm -hmm. to state. Uh, I'm not exactly sure in Arkansas, but my, I think in Arkansas we do not require parental uh, mm -hmm. consent in order to uh, examine and treat for sure. STDs. Uh, I, I tr tried to verify that before I came in today, but was unable mm -hmm. to do so, sure. so I hope I'm not misspeaking. Yeah, that sounds that about right to me yeah. as well. Where, where can people go to get tested for STDs? Well, there's so many different places you can go. Uh, uh, places like Planned Parenthood sure. offer that type of counseling. Uh, any f uh, family physician or OBGYN mm -hmm. uh, uh, office uh, can provide that. Uh, local uh, county health departments, mm -hmm. health units have those services available. All right. So very many places that are available for young men and women to be tested. Okay. For more information, are there any websites available that you're aware of, like the CDC? Well, or? I would go to cdc.gov okay. and just search under STDs or teen mm -hmm. pregnancy, whatever it is that you're interested in, in viewing, because that's going to have the most accurate and up-to-date information and guidelines mm -hmm. for treatment and information that's uh, there for people to read. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Brimbury, for sharing your wealth of information with us. We appreciate it. And thanks for inviting me. It's my right. pleasure.